Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Mornings with Granny. It is cold and rainy. I just went to take care of the dog. I am dog sitting today and make sure she was fed. And it's just nasty out there. It's about, I think, 40 degrees. Only supposed to be 44 today. But anyway, I'll show you a couple pieces of mail I got. This is from my friend Tracy in Ohio. And let's see, she's going to have another grandbaby. Congratulations, Tracy. And Kathy in California? No, I haven't received anything from you since the last thing I showed. This is from Janet, and Janet is in North Carolina. Let's see. And she sent little card it says hope faith and love and she didn't write anything on the inside but she did write seven seven food oh the seven food challenge chicken carrot spinach eggs red potatoes bananas and pineapple i thought it said seven fowls when i first looked at it i thought good you got seven chickens <laughs> thank you janet I think I got on the wrong glasses this morning. I can't see. I thought I would answer a few questions after I did the um, minivan video yesterday. I didn't say what kind of van it was, and I had several people ask. It's a 2007 Hyundai Entourage. I got it about four years ago. It was a salvage vehicle. They had had a little bit bumper damage on the front and the back, which they had fixed. And I had a Ford Taurus, a 2003, if I remember correctly, and it had a hundred and, I think 17,000 miles on it. And I wanted a van. So I talked to one of the local guys around here that had the van and I traded with him. And I got the Hyundai Entourage. It had 58,000 miles on it. And it's got 70, 6,000 on it now. So it should last a long time. I had to do a little work, but over four years, I don't think I've spent, oh, I want to say maybe $2,000. I had to have uh, the door handles fixed. Um, one on each side broke. And then axles on the front a battery, brakes, and the normal oil changes, but all in all, for over four years, that's not bad. I mean, it's better than making payments. But I would like eventually to have a high-top van if I can find a really good deal. This one had three rows of seats. People ask me about the seats. The second ones, they're not stow and go. Not on the second row. Those are, I took those out. And the way I got them out was you uh, read the directions, of course, how to take them loose. And then there was no one here but me to move them. And those seats weigh, I think, 50, 60 pounds. So I did the old-fashioned way like we used to do when we were moving. I put a tarp on the ground, rolled the seat out onto the ground, and then pulled the seat up the um, into the shed on the tarp and wrapped them up in a tarp. And the ones in the back... The third row, they fold down. If I go camping, or when I go camping, and I like it, and I think I'm going to do it a lot, I might take one of the third row seats out because I would have a lot more room in the well in the back where the seat is actually stored. Because my original idea was to take one of those out and put... Um, a tub down in there, a plastic tub, you know, about yay big. I'll show, in fact, I'll show it to you next time we do stuff on the car. Um, because you can sit on the edge of that well and put some water in that tub and you can sit there and wash off. That was another question I had was, um, what about showers and stuff? Well, when I first go out, I'm only go for a day or two. I've got wipes and water and washcloths and all that stuff. 
but I plan on being at a campground where they have shower and bathrooms because my emergency pot is just what it says, emergency only or during the night. So I don't plan on being somewhere without one. There's always truck stops and stuff that you can stop at too. Someone else asked me, what was it, um, about safety. Well, you're in a car for one thing. So wherever you go, if you get where you're not feeling safe, you can just get in, get in the front seat and drive off. Always leave that front seat open where you can get into it. And you can drive off. And I wouldn't go anywhere. I didn't have cell service. My daughter and I have three life, what's it called? Life 360. She always knows where I'm at. So if anything does happen, she knows where I'm at. Plus my other daughter has AAA road service for me. So, and then I've got gizmo in the car as a warning system. And if anybody's stupid enough to stick their arm in my car, I promise you that arm's going to go out a lot different looking than it came in. But I carry pepper spray and other items. So that's the safety issue. You know, safety, you always pay attention to your surroundings. I took, years ago, I took a self-defense class, karate. And one thing they always said is, don't look like a victim. When you see somebody, look at them. Don't be playing on your phone, fumbling for your keys, or your mind's off 50 directions and you're not paying attention to your surroundings. Use common sense. Look at the person. Have your keys. They taught us to have our keys in our hand with the key pointing out like this. The keys pointing out like this. So if you hit somebody, you've got the points of your keys. But usually if you don't look like a victim, most of the time they're not going to bother you. And especially with a dog, they're not going they don't usually bother you. So um, they also taught us that if somebody does attack, you holler fire. They said because when you holler help, people don't really pay any attention. And it's sad to say, but they don't. But if you holler fire... They think they're going to be in danger, too, so then they pay attention. I know that's, like I said, that's just sad, but that's the way it is. But if you can take a local class on self-defense, that would be good. Okay, let's see. What else did I get asked? Safety, type of car, showers. I'm trying to think. Oh, um, someone recommended getting the... Uh, battery operated candles. If you saw my prep videos, you know I've got plenty of battery operated candles. The reason I had the little tea light in the car is because I wanted to see that night if it would heat that area up. Yes, it's open flame, and yes, I'm careful. And yes, I do have a fire extinguisher that I carry. Another thing that someone asked was about um, carrying battery packs for your phone. I have two. This one is solar charged, or you can plug it in and charge it. Or you can plug it into the car and charge it. This is a real tree charger. I don't remember what the amps is on it. I don't think it says on here. But um, they have them at Big Lots. I paid, I think it was $16 for this. And then I have another one that's called a Mophie. M O, I think it's M O P H I E. I got it at Walmart. It's not solar. And I believe it was, um, I want to say about $25 for that one. So I've got two. And I also have a NOCO, N O C O, battery charger that you can jump your battery in your car or you can charge your <clears throat> phone. I have one of those. And those were. I got it Christmas before last, I think. And they were like, at that time, I think $69 on Amazon, something like that. They're handy to have, though, because you could jump your car battery or your lawnmower battery. So I've got those backups. Um, let's try and think, what else was I asked? Oh, somebody asked, was I happy? Now, they asked us on a previous video. Um, That's why I'm doing this, because I am tired of sitting in this house 
ever since I got hurt at work, I have been sitting in this house for, what, 13, 14 years now. And I decided, I think it was Jan from Butterfly Tracks said she got up and started doing what she was doing because she discovered her best friend was Netflix and Hulu. And that's the way it is here. And I don't want to sit in this house the rest of my life. I want to go out and see things. I used to go to the beach in the mountains every year. That was before I lived at the beach or lived in the mountains. But I used to go every year. I'd go to one in February and one in October. And I haven't had any friends to go with, so I haven't been going. Or the money financially to go since uh, my financial situation changed when I got hurt. But anyway, point is, is I want to change things up. Someone else asked or said that I was brave. No, I'm not brave. <laughs> I'm scared to death. But I'm not going to let fear keep me home. I'll go try it. If I don't like it, I don't have to do it again. My van build is a no build. I'm not planning on putting anything up in there that I can't take down in case I ever want to sell the van and get maybe a high top or whatever. So I'm just going to go try it. I don't know when I'll go. I was hoping to go in the next week or two. I don't know. And somebody else said, don't tell people where you're at. Well, of course I'm not. These videos go up sometimes a week or two later. So I wouldn't tell anybody where I'm at except family, of course. Or um, they ask, wouldn't I be scared to travel alone? Well, that's why you belong to the van life groups. There are several groups you can join. And then you can see if anyone is camping in the area that you want to go to. Or maybe they have a caravan that's traveling around the, let's say if you want to do North Carolina mountains, you ask if there's anybody in the North Carolina mountains that happens to be camping and you can go join them. The, um, I was trying to think what else someone asked. Can't remember all the questions right now. I was trying to answer most of them. I think that's pretty much it. But all I can do is say, if you've, if you've got a van, even a car, if you will get on YouTube and type in women living in cars or women camping in cars or vans, you will see a lot of great ideas. And there are women out there that are actually camping in the cars or a small SUV. I've seen them in Priuses, Toyotas, um, Pontiacs, Jeeps all kinds of different things. They have cars, vans, minivans, extended vans, um, class B, class C, you name it. If you go on there, you can, can watch. And Bob Wells on Cheap RV Living is a wealth of information. You can find just about anything on his channel because he's been doing it a long time. So if you're interested, look that up too. Uh, what else? Oh, someone said something about uh, blacking out the windows. That's why I have the poster board. And I've got that one black sheet that I'm cutting. I want to try to, I'm going to try the curtain rod across the back, hatchback again, and see if that, if I can get it where it will hold. If that doesn't work, I'm going to cut a piece to fit of the sheet to fit the window and Velcro it on. And I have, um, what do they call it, sunshade that goes in the front window. But I also, if you look at my picture on the thumbnail, you see the black sheet across that I had put on a um, curtain rod to divide the front from the pass, uh, front from the back. And um, so I don't know, I'm just working with it. And I got poster board that I put on the windows on the side. I don't know if I'm going to keep it that way or not. This is just an, an experiment that I'm trying. I mean, you just keep trying things and trying them over and over till you get something you like. Someone asked about the storage under the bed. I have some plastic uh, containers, under bed containers that I had in the shed, so I just pulled those out. And I can put stuff in there. They're, I don't know, probably about, I want to say eight inches, nine inches 
tall. There's enough room under that bed you can stack two. And you put bungee cords across it to hold them so they don't slide when you put on brakes. And I have uh, those soft-sided containers that you get like at Dollar Tree um, Square that you can put stuff in. I've got a couple of those under the bed. And then I've got my soft-sided bags. I got one bag for shower stuff like your towel and wash rag and flip-flops and so forth. And then I got one soft-sided bag for gizmo stuff and then one soft-sided bag for my clothes, which you can, you know, push in any corner. And what else was asked? Hmm. I think that's... I want to say that's all. If I skip something, you can ask it in the comments below. But I think I about covered all the questions that I can think of right now anyway. So I just wanted to get on here and answer a few of those before I forgot about them. So if you would, please give this a thumbs up. Please subscribe, and I hope you have a happy Sunday, and stay warm, because it is, like I said, it's nasty here, and I know um, a lot of people are still getting snow. We don't usually get ice until end of January, which is toward the end of January now, or February. We usually get a little bit of ice, and maybe, maybe about a half an inch of snow, that's it. But anyway... Have a good day, and I hope this answers some of you guys' questions. Bye-bye for now.